That's what's keeping me surviving. It helps me get it out of my head. And showing you you're able. Don't think you are disabled. I feel I have more confidence. When I tried it, I realized this is something I want to try more and more. It struck me many years ago that as a physician, all I was doing is making the diagnosis of depression, anxiety, or stress, and then either referring them for counseling or writing out a prescription. And I knew that that wasn't the right approach. There's a pharmacological aspect and there's a non-pharmacological aspect. The pharmacological aspect is the medication route. And the non-pharmacological aspect, everything else we do to make patients' life better without using medication. Studies have shown the non-pharmacological aspect is extremely important. That prescribing a medication and having the patient leave the office just wasn't good enough. And so then I thought that there were other factors that would be necessary to enhance the mood, the desire, the ambition, of the individual to bring out the best in them. And that's when I began to realize in reading the literature that art in mental health made a huge difference and research has borne this out. Social interaction, arts, dance, music, movement, all of these work together in providing the perfect cure for people with depression or anxiety. You introduce art therapy, great results, good recovery, self-esteem is improved, sense of well-being, self-worth, all of this together makes a huge difference. When I ask them one-on-one -on -one, without the art, right, they're not really giving me this information. But now I'm seeing in a visual element what's really going on for them and then using that as a prompt to talk about their experience and, you know, owning that experience. And I think it's such an incredibly beautiful thing. It allows folks to open up in a way that maybe they're not as comfortable with a one-on-one -on -one situation or just in a sense of being able to talk. It gives us a starting point. It gives us a way that we can say, hey, someone else has experienced this and that's okay. So some of the benefits definitely were having a, a sense of calm, peace of mind, ability to share with others and through their sharing they're actually helping to support others and encouraging others to express themselves and expression can come in so many different formats by providing an array of artistic opportunities people can find their voice to tell their story share their emotions and we get a chance to understand people through their work art can't, art can say things that aren't expressed in words. It can validate people's emotions. So providing folks with these opportunities, it gives them their voice back, allows them to tell their story. Art was telling me about something hidden in my uh, unconscious mind. Something was revealed in front of me on the piece of paper, and I was able to actually see it as an observer. And when you absorb where your pain becomes less. And that was the miracle of art therapy. I started to heal and I started to feel stronger and more resilient. You're waking up each side of your uh, abandoned talent. Each program, each class, pottery, like, I mean, you can see the pottery of my starting Okay, but even I accepted as an artist, I said, okay, that can be blue flame. So, but I mean, then to the perfection in two sessions. So this kind of program is just walking us into learning process of what we are looking for, to turn our brain new way and just find ourselves again. When I joined the program, I during it during the pandemic, I was isolated and I don't realize it can be so powerful in boosting up my spirit. I just didn't want a psychiatrist that dispenses medication. I wanted somebody to be able to talk to like we are today and like they do at her house. 
but at least in that moment, if it's very difficult, then if I write it out, then it's it's out and I can calm down a bit and continue. If you want to turn your emotional pain to love, it's possible through art therapy. That would happen to me. And if I look at myself back like three years ago, how much pain and my pain and head, I would never believe at that point that somebody would tell me you would feel love instead of pain but it's actually what I'm experiencing right now. And it's just amazing, you know, the power, the power of art, and what it can do to the person, you know. So I would definitely recommend it to everybody. Art therapy or some kind of art form will help them to focus their mind on what they're doing. That's the first thing. So that make the reverse engineering in your chemical system then you will start producing these happy chemicals more and more because you're not thinking, you're indirectly without knowing, you're blocking your bad thoughts. It's really difficult to not see the positive results. It is so fun, so it, it doesn't feel like it's a type of intervention or a type of treatment, but as we're writing a poem or making a painting, we tend to think about our feelings and think about our emotions and put those in words and in pictures and really be able to organize our thoughts that we typically wouldn't if we're not engaging in that form of expression. Outward expression of what's happening inside in a grief journey is the way a person moves to a new normal for life. So that can be through talking, through um, writing, through art, through music. Oftentimes it's really difficult to put words to grief. I think it's healing. Um, even even with young kids where they write when they write stories I feel like it's it's a metaphor for some of the things they're struggling with that they don't even realize but they're processing things and it's healing um, and they're finding their voice they're becoming more confident in who they are and are able to be more successful as people because they can speak for themselves they feel more confident in their in their literacy in their communication skills um, and it connects people more with empathy. You know, when you create stories, you're, you're really connecting with um, how people are feeling. Um, it makes us more human. We need spaces like The Hub now more than ever because these types of spaces connect people in genuine ways that are authentic to people's experience and life experiences. And it grants people an opportunity to and know what it's like to feel safe being yourself and having the opportunity to practice becoming the self that you've always wanted to be. Nothing other than arts can truly do that. And suddenly everybody's got this different perspective and everyone's coming in and going, not I can't, but look what I can do. You might not be able to do A, but you can do B. And I think that's really what it's about, is giving the students the opportunity to not only explore themselves through movement, but explore confidence through movement. Many studies in Canada and internationally have indicated that many, many young people often have their first brush with mental health challenges in elementary school. And we were hoping that this message can empower people. And I think the time has come that people realize that the arts are going to be a pathway to both personal fulfillment and joy and also to, as an economic driver. People have to have a way to express their feelings and thoughts. That's so important to society. A point I like to highlight through my experiences when pandemic first hit and we were building these art kits to take to people. There were times that we couldn't get art supplies. And why is that? because everyone's at home painting, creating. That was the way they were biding their time. The program is transformational. People who join the workshops and write for a while see the benefits to both themselves and to others as they gain confidence, find themselves as creative artists, and also are able to express themselves in a more positive and enlightened way. That's my biggest happiness is working and giving people who have a difficult time, a day of absolute enjoyment and possible and hope. And I've worked with Tachoy Go since for 12 years and when he came, he's autistic, he hung his head, didn't talk. 
we've just finished our seventh book, so I've been writing one-page stories for him to illustrate. So I send him, and then he'd send an illustration, and I got up to 18. So we've just published this book called COVID Tales, and it's the very best book I think I've ever written, and it's the best book he's ever illustrated. It reaches people who have mental health challenges and hurdles in life because it speaks to the very core of what it is that creates us. And if we have something that speaks to our very core, it acts as an anchor. And that anchor is a solid foundation that is rooted in a sense of self-trust, in a sense of building trust with others and knowing what that looks like, in a sense of understanding how catharsis is very healing and repairing for your mind physically, emotionally, and also spiritually for your well-being. It is the starting point for trauma and trauma repair and recovery. And um, I find that uh, when you help one person, like for example, the women who come into our classes, she could be a mom and she learns something with us. And like I said earlier, it has a domino effect. She feels good about it. So she goes home and she does the same thing with her kids. So what happens, the kids associate that activity with feeling good. And when kids feel good, the family feels good, right? There is a sense of a, a good aura, a good feeling that uh, ripples across the entire family, right? And I think in the end, it just promotes well-being all around. Well, at the end of the day, we're dealing with human beings. We want to ensure that there's a quality of life here, a quality of life that benefits not the individual, their family, but society as a whole. And you can imagine that they say that in the world today, 40% of the world has some form of anxiety or depression at some point in time in their life. And if we provide the right tools, the right interventions at the right time, we will be successful and we can overcome mental health and diminish it to some extent. Managing mental health with art therapy is truly a paradigm shift in the management of mental health. And until and unless we come to realize that there is this paradigm shift that we all need to get along with and make it happen, we'd be better off.